Hello, my name is Mauricio Castro. I am a historian here at Center College. Uh, at the, in the history program, I teach courses about modern American history, about the interaction between the United States and Latin America, uh, courses about how uh, American culture and politics is reflected through popular culture like rock and roll, uh, uh, how economic history ties with film, uh, a little bit about immigration, all sorts of stuff, right? And uh, I was excited when I was invited to come and maybe talk to you a little bit about some books that have uh, that are favorites of mine or that I've, I've, I've developed a particular interest in. And I picked three books that I think are fairly distinct from one another, but maybe have a few commonalities when I started thinking about it uh, in advance of this recording. Um, so maybe let's get going. Uh, the first one is a novel that I read when I was a student at a liberal arts college, in some ways a lot like Center, and I was taking a class on uh, a 20th century uh, Russian literature. And the uh, instructor had us read uh, Mikhail Bulgakov's uh, The Master and Margarita, which is a fascinating uh, sort of modernist um, satire of the Soviet uh, period, right? Uh, Bulgakov uh, it was known mostly for, for writing these sort of like more uh, dystopian stories, uh, but The Master of Margarita is this sort of like in, in, in a sense very biting type of, of social satire of uh, the Russia of the 1930s, of the Soviet Union in the 1930s, that is. Um, Bulgakov uh, wrote the um, the manuscript between 1928 and 1940. Uh, it was actually kind of a, an unfinished uh, type manuscript. It was the type of thing that he never expected would be published in his lifetime because specifically of, uh, you know, Stalinist restrictions as well as, uh, you know, his own uh, biting satire. Um, it's, it's one of these things that was, uh, you know, left uh, quietly in a desk drawer, not quite some sentences unfinished, a few things, a few, mostly, almost entirely complete. And it's a really a fascinating piece of literature because what it does is that it takes these two settings, Moscow in the 1930s and uh, Jerusalem, uh, the Jerusalem of Pontius Pilate. He takes the, 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 the uh, Pontius Pilate as a character during uh, the biblical trial of, of, of Jesus Christ and um, the novel in the, the, the modern uh, set, section, right, the modern, the section set in Moscow in the 1930s is essentially about uh, the devil coming to, uh, you know, um, act sort of aggressively atheistic uh, Russia uh, with a coterie of these very outlandish characters, including uh, 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 a talking gigantic black cat who uh, goes around armed and causes all sorts of chaos. And it's a really very fascinating book and it's a really funny book. And that's one of the things that like really made it uh, something that I really enjoyed when I started uh, reading it. It, 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 it satirizes uh, elements of, of Soviet society. It satirizes uh, some of those Soviet elites, but it, 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 it's, it's in many ways a, um, it's a portrait of creation, right? Of, of the artist and the, 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 the suffering of, of, of creating something in the face of a society and a public that might not necessarily be super into it. Um, Bulgakov, uh, in fact, you know, wrote a first draft of this novel and then burned it. And in the, um, in the novel, uh, the, the writer, uh, one of the writers uh, that's, that's portrayed in the novel, the, the titular master, uh, uh, burns his own manuscripts as sort of reflecting his own uh, life. And it's, it ends up being this, this really interesting, again, really complex sort of, of book. But again, I think that the thing that really like drew me in was the humor. It's really, really funny. And you, you, you wouldn't necessarily think it would be that way given that it's a, uh, um, a book about uh, sort of these, these interactions between these sort of biblical figures and these modern, maybe there is some inherent uh, humor in that uh, after all. 
Um, interesting bit uh, of, of trivia, perhaps, about the Master and Margarita. It was uh, one of, and I guess this is where it kind of interacts with one of my interests in, um, in, in my teaching. Uh, it was uh, sort of acknowledged by uh, Mick Jagger as one of the influences for the Rolling Stone song, Sympathy for the Devil. Uh, and so th this, this novel, right, that um, was, uh, you know, not uh, really published until the 60s, right, even though it, it like, you know, was, you know, Bulgakov died in the 1940s, it, it had to be sort of essentially smuggled out of the Soviet Union, has this longer cultural footprint. Um, so yeah, that's, it's an, it's an interesting, interesting little book. All right, so the other book, uh, the second book that I uh, wanted to talk about was uh, Raymond Chandler's The Long Goodbye. Um, Raymond Chandler, if you are not familiar with Chandler, is the creator of sort of one of the great uh, private investigator characters of the 20th century, which is Philip Marlowe, who has been, uh, you know, portrayed in, in, in movies and televisions many times. Um, and I'll talk about one of those particular adaptations in, in a little bit. But um, Marlowe is, is, is kind of in many ways kind of the sort of prototypical uh, uh, sort of detective. He is the, the your, your, your sort of down on his luck noir protagonist. And uh, the thing is, um, Chandler had this, this quote, right, in, in, in this book, his other book that he published called The Simple Art of Murder, talking about like, you know, what type of character must be at the center of this, right? Uh, uh, you know, he, 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 he talks about uh, the sort of the mean streets of um, the, 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 the sort of the worlds that writers like him create and how the, down these mean street must come a man who is not himself mean, who is neither tarnished nor afraid, right? Someone who is the hero of the story, um, which I think is a, a bit of a high standard to hold most human beings, uh, a, but very good for a dog, which is why when I adopted a dog in graduate school, I named him Marlo. Uh, and so um, he himself was uh, uh, neither tarnished nor afraid. Uh, well except by loud clanging metallic noises, but that's hardly his fault. Um, so here's the thing, The Long Goodbye, right? It is the, I believe, sixth, sixth book that uh, Chandler wrote with his protagonist, Marlowe. It is the longest of these books, right? And in, in a lot of ways, this is what often opens it up for criticism, right? Uh, Marlowe, uh, the, the, the books, the, the Marlowe books by Chandler tend to tend to be a little bit slimmer, right? Uh, a lot of this uh, sort of like good sort of detective noir writing is often uh, lean, right? It's supposed to be like, you know, built for speed, right? Sometimes it, it, it really accentuates the meanness of some of these, these characters, some of the, these environments. Um, and there are other authors who, who, who really reflect this. I'm thinking particularly of the Richard Stark uh, Parker novels uh, do that very, very well. Um, but Chandler, you know, usually, you know, would write these sort of like much slimmer tomes. The Long Goodbye is probably his longest book, and it is in a lot of ways fairly autobiographical. Um, it's the story of how uh, his PI, uh, Philip Marlowe, ends up befriending a man who uh, then disappears and is under uh, investigation for murder. And so it ends up... Um, putting Marlowe in a series of problems, but along the way he meets uh, an alcoholic author who is uh, this sort of a figure uh, who is, you know, both uh, tempestuous and problematic, but also very sympathetic. And, and this is Chandler in some ways, like uh, using the genre of the detective novel to do some social commentary about the issues of alcoholism, about uh, how, uh, you know, Chandler was an Englishman living in, um, in Hollywood, and he had his criticisms of the culture of the West Coast. Um, and in some ways, like I said, it's pretty autobiographical, like Chandler writes this as his wife is dying. Uh, he puts a lot of himself in Roger Wade, the, the character of the sort of the alcoholic uh, author. Um, and it's in many ways, basically the last of, there's, there's one more, um, 
Marlowe novel after this, but it, it's, it's very different from some of the others. In many ways, it, this is kind of the last Marlowe novel. Um, and he, he puts a lot of himself into it and he puts a lot of, 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 of his life into it. And it's, 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 it's a, an, a, an interesting book about uh, friendship and, and, and sympathy and empathy and um, loyalty and about how people can, how we can love people who disappoint us sometimes. Um, and I like it, I like it quite a bit. It was uh, about 20 years after it came out, it was the basis for a, a movie by the same name, uh, which starred uh, Elliot Gould in 1973 as Philip Marlowe. They updated the setting from, you know, the early 50s in LA to the 1970s. Uh, and it was directed by Robert Altman, who was, you know, one of the great auteurs of the 1970s. And uh, it is one of my uh, favorite uh, sort of film noirs, even though it is, you know, not, it's, it's, it's more of a, a, you know, a very beachy uh, color film, very 70s sort of movie, but it's just fantastic. So the last uh, book that I, um, wanted to highlight is actually a graphic novel. Uh, this is a Day Tripper. It is uh, written and illustrated by Fabio Moon and Gabriel Ba. Uh, Moon and Ba are actually twin brothers from Brazil who, um, you know, in starting about 15 years ago or so, started really making a name for themselves uh, in the uh, U.S. Uh, comic book market. Um, I came across uh, their work uh, fairly early in that sort of like, you know, breakthrough moment. Um, and when this started coming out in a serialized format, I was actually working uh, in a uh, comic book and record shop uh, during graduate school. And I remember picking up the first issue of this and being just really, uh, I think mostly doing it for the art because they, ha they, they, they have a very sort of beautiful art style, which is also um, fantastically colored here. And um, it is, the story that I found in the first chapter was the story of um, a man named Bras de Oliva Domingos, who was a, um, writer of obituaries for a Brazilian newspaper. He is a son of a famous novelist. He is sort of like, you know, sort of struggling with getting his own writing career off the ground. He wants to, uh, you know, be noticed and, and stand on his own two feet. Uh, you know, he's a little frustrated because it's, you know, there's a big thing honoring his father and it's happening on his birthday and it's, everybody seems to have, you know, kind of forgotten about it. And then at the end of the first chapter, he, he dies. He's killed in a robbery in a bar where he goes to pick up a, a, pack, a, 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 pack of, a pack of cigarettes before he goes to his father's party. So then the next chapter comes out and I open it and it's a younger version of, um, of Bras. And I'm, I'm reading about uh, uh, something that happened earlier in his life and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I get it, right? Like we're gonna go through this person's life having seen his death in the beginning. And then at the end of the second chapter, he dies. Um, and so forth and so on. What ends up happening is that we get a meditation on mortality and life, on creation, on family, on friendship that uh, over the course of, of 10 uh, distinct chapters, looks at the various stages of one man's life, uh, his relationships, uh, both you know, familial, friendly, uh, romantic, um, what it means to be uh, uh, an artist, what it means to be a son, what it means to be a, a husband and a father, um, and what it means to come face to face with your own mortality. And it's, it, it has this, uh, given that, that, that 
that structure, right? Where uh, every a chapter is punctuated by his death and uh, a little bit of his own obituary uh, of that particular age. Uh, it has a, a maybe a, a more than a bit of magical realism to it, but um, it's 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 honestly a wonderful wonderful novel, and uh, the art I think is just gorgeous. So yeah, uh, three books that I would highly recommend for uh, fans of Center Reads. <laughs>